The protest came a day before an all-important Israeli government approval right for a five-year strategic plan to transition to cloud. It's called Project Nimbus, and this was sensitive for certain employees. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially in the in the midst of the war between Israel and Gaza, um, employees have really been activated about this issue and have been organizing to try to protest the way that their work contributes to tools that would then serve the Israeli government, um, which again is engaged in war. And so they say that they have a right to, you know, band together and object to this use of their work and that U.S. labor law actually protects them um, from uh, sort of consequences from the company, discipline from the company, because they believe they are within their rights to, to, to come together over this issue. Davey, in your story, you present a very clear, clear chronology of what happened and the perspective of both sides of the situation. When I put on social media, you were coming on the show, one of the questions I got most commonly was, could you tell us a bit more about the, the roles of those that were fired, what we know about those specifically? Because it was quite a broad protest, and we're saying less than or fewer than 30 people actually lost their jobs. Yeah, so um, from the workers we spoke to, several of them were software engineers. Some of them worked on cloud, and there were even some employees who were involved in speaking out against Project Nimbus, who worked for DeepMind, which is Google's AI lab. Um, you know, these these workers tend to not have specific um, visibility into exactly what Israel is doing with their technology because these contracts are so siloed, and workers don't, you know, directly work on on the tools that the Israeli government might use, but they build the tools that the Israeli government can then use for any purpose. Um, there's been prior reporting that, you know, the cloud services that the Israeli government uses is on their own instance, private instance of Google Cloud. And so from that perspective, you know, employees can't see inside of, of that cloud that's um, on Israeli soil and being used by Israeli government. Um, but these employees have been obviously following the news um, and believe that their work may be not so in a straight direct line um, but still does contribute significantly to the way that the technology that Israel is now using and deploying in the war with Gaza. When you say Gaza, actually not quite right, the war between Israel and Hamas, of course. Hamas of course. deemed, of course, a, a, an issue, a terrorist organization by the EU and the United States. Davy, I'm really interested in perhaps is this a tone shift in any way coming from the very leadership of Alphabet and indeed Google? I mean, Sunil Pichai, how much has he had to weigh in here and decide what the outcome is? Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is a shift in tone. Um, for so long, really, the founding culture of Google has been, you know, to foster this um, sense of open debate and employees are encouraged to speak out about anything really having to do with their work. Um, those were in the early days. Um, but then over the years, uh, employees have really started to band together over important social issues. Um, you know, in 2018 or so, there was organizing around sexual harassment allegations from leadership at the company and sort of the the way that they wanted um, women to be able to speak out about their experiences. So there was a walkout um, from employees uh, around that issue. And other issues have also galvanized these employees, um, you know, in 2020 with yes. the killing of um, George Floyd and organizing around the Black Lives Matter protests. That was another issue. But this really has emerged as a particularly sensitive flashpoint for Google, this particular issue with Israel. And the company appears to be sending a message that they aren't going to tolerate um, this kind of workplace activism anymore.
David, you, you, you talked about how the, the workforce has been galvanized. You note in the final paragraph of your report that despite the response from Google, many employees feel that they're getting support. Uh, is that happening contemporaneously? And, and is there any sense that mm -hmm. these strikes or sit-ins will continue, or if this is the end of it now? It's hard to say. Google sent a very strongly worded message to all employees, essentially saying this is not um, this is not something they will tolerate. That it is against company policy. Um, at the same time, you know, we've heard from employees who have been keeping an eye on the internal messaging that's been happening at the company, and several people are actually quite upset by this move um, from the company and. Maybe it'll take a while for them to do another action, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, this could continue on for many more months.